Do you realize how much we actually rely on uh, recommendations and testimonials and ratings? If you look at your average day, if you're in the middle of the city and you're not exactly sure where you're from, uh, where you are and what is good to recommend or what's good to eat or where it's good to meet somebody, you'll go online and you look for these recommendations and you read about the recommendations to see if it fits what you're looking for or if it's what you're in the mood for. And we rely on this so heavily, but at the same time, it's something we don't often give back. There are some people who love to write recommendations, don't get me wrong. And anytime they go anywhere, they're writing a recommendation, they're saying this place was fabulous, here's why, this place sucked, here's why, and go there, don't go there. You know, there's some people that love to do that. But then there's other people who are more reserved. And they're like, okay, it was okay. It wasn't worth writing a review. This place was kind of bad, but it wasn't worth complaining about. Okay. It doesn't seem important to you, but it's important to the next person looking it up. Because it's usually these people who have the most descriptive ability and reasoning why they like or love something or dislike or hate something so strongly. There's also the element of if you only go online to write a negative review. And negative reviews, yes, they spread a lot faster, but think about it this way. As a professional, if you're online only to write negative reviews and someone's going to look you up, guess what? they're gonna see that all you do is write negative reviews, creating the perception that you are a negative person. And they, most people don't wanna be around that. Some people do, most people don't. It's like, okay, so when you realize that your brand goes beyond just how you market your business, what your social media posts are, the marketing materials that you create, but it's also in how you represent yourself. What kind of person are you? So that's why we're going to talk today about how to write an effective recommendation, when and how you should do it. You can take the approach of writing a recommendation for everything and businesses would be eternally grateful. Or you can take the approach of only writing them for those that you feel are worth it, good or bad. That's up to you. What I encourage you to do is write one more recommendation than what you think or feel comfortable writing. So if you don't feel comfortable writing them, then my challenge to you is write one recommendation this week. If you feel comfortable writing recommendations, my challenge to you is write one more than what you would normally write. So if you would normally write two in a week, write three in a week. And sometimes recommending doesn't always have to be actual words. It can be sharing a page or sharing a company. So for example, when you're on Facebook and you like a new business page, you'll notice that Facebook has a pop-up that says you might also like these pages. Well, right above that on the right is a drop-down box. And that drop-down arrow allows you to share this page with some of your friends. We're on Facebook, so of course they're all friends. Who else do you know that would benefit from the content on this page? You can do it with this group as well, any group that you belong to. You can share this group with people who you feel would benefit from the content and from the conversations that go on within the group. This is also another way of recommending a company, a business, or even a group, a group of people. So those are different ways that you can share. And it's also my challenge for you. And we'll come back to the challenge a little later. But in the meantime, let's talk about writing a recommendation. In the days before social media, a letter of recommendation was this formalized process. 
and you would have company letterhead and logo up top, contact information down on the bottom, formal date, formal uh, to whom it may concern or dear sir or ma'am, an explanation of why you're recommending them and then an explanation of your credentials to justify that you are qualified to recommend this person. Guess what? Bye-bye. None of that's relevant anymore. Now it's about, I'm a person, you're a person. I'm recommending you because of my experience with you. Yes, my title. Yes, my experience may carry more weight than others. My name may carry more weight than others. But overall, it's about my experience with you. So if you're writing a recommendation, you want to use what's called a journalistic style format, meaning what's most important goes first. Depending on how you like to write, you may actually want to write, it, write out a couple ideas and then revise it and put it in the correct format. So the very first sentence needs to be your impact sentence. If you're looking at a newspaper, the title is your impact sentence. It is the one sentence that if they read nothing else, they get the exact point, they get the exact emotion, and it drives it home right there, then and there, from that one sentence. Second sentence elaborates that a little bit further. And then you can go on and explain it. Never in a recommendation do you need to justify your credentials unless it is relevant to the recommendation and why you're recommending this person. It's about the results that they provided for you, what it's like to work with them, and why you would recommend them. Notice it's all about experience and relationship and who is a good fit to also work with this person. So again, your first sentence is if you were to take this whole person and shrink them down into this one teeny tiny sentence, that's your first sentence. It's a journalistic style of writing. And then from there you can explain it. But again, you want to stick with the format of most important up at very first. And then as it gets, as you go further on down, least important this way. And the reason they call it journalistic style is uh, journalists would write and let's say they wrote a thousand word article about whatever topic, but the newspaper layout person only had room for 800 words. They knew that because of this style of writing, they could cut out these last 200 words and it wouldn't make a difference. So you want to keep that mentality in mind where most important is first and then as you get further on down, it gets less and less important. This way, um, the reality is when people are reading a recommendation, they want to get the point. For some people, they can get it in one sentence. For some people, they need three or four sentences to get that point. And then there's others who like to be more detailed and know absolutely everything about what you're recommending and why you're recommending. So most impact up front, and then you can break it into the detail of, you know, maybe even share a story about, you know, you worked with this person on this particular project, here were some of the challenges that you faced, and here's what impressed you about working with this person. So that's the format for writing a personal recommendation, person to person. This is where you would use this format is on LinkedIn because that is all, you know, the personal profiles they ask you to recommend and that's where you would do that. And then let's say with Facebook, you have business pages. Sometimes the business page is about a person, but other times it's actually about a company. And while there's validity to writing about a person that works for that company, that person might not always be there or that person might not interact with that page. So remember, if you're going to a company page and it's the company that's represented, you want to model the, the format we just talked about, but you want to do it in a slightly different way. In that case, you want to write a 
about the actual company. You can reference specific people and how they helped you. But remember, the recommendation is overall about the actual company. And an example of this is I wrote a recommendation for the Purple Store. Big surprise, I know, I like the Purple Store. And uh, yes, I know some of the staff that work there. And yes, I love the staff that works there. But me writing a recommendation about the individual staff members doesn't help the Purple Store or the Purple Store brand. It might help the individual employees and boost morale from that perspective, but it doesn't help the overall brand. And for somebody who's not familiar with the Purple Store, while it's great to help them get to know that these people work for the company, if they call and they don't talk to the people that I mention, then it's like, oh, well, I've been let down. Well, maybe that person left. So in my recommendation for them, what I did is I wrote about the standards and the quality and how they, you know, personally invest the time to make sure that the products that they carry are high quality and are not going to break within two weeks of you purchasing them. And of course they're purple. It's fabulous. Anyway, so my recommendation for them was all about the overall standards of the company. And then what I could do if there was a particular reason why I was calling out certain employees, I could then reference certain employees and say, this person did this, this person helped me with that. And that's how you can incorporate a company testimonial with employees. And sometimes there's validity to doing this, but remember, it depends on where you're writing the recommendation and who and why you're, you're writing it. Do you want it to benefit the person? In which case you want to do it on LinkedIn. If you want it to represent the brand or the company, you want to do it on Facebook. When you're on Facebook, bottom left of the or bottom right of the banner image is usually a uh, you'll see a star rating, and you can click rate the company. And sometimes it's on the left too. Uh, but that's make sure you look for it. My challenge for you is in the next week, write one company recommendation, one personal recommendation, and share a, share a group, maybe. Share a company. You know, share, share the pages with the people that you know can benefit from the recommendation or from the content that's being shared. We value, we uh, highly value recommendations more than we value going into the unknown. So you know that your brand, that your voice, that your credibility carries weight. You know that there are certain people in your network that no matter what you say, they're there. They're gonna listen, they're gonna join, they're going to do whatever it is you're recommending because it's you saying it. You carry that clout with them. So help them. The more you help them, the more they help you. Remember, I think we've talked about this before, and if not, we'll be doing it in an upcoming live. Your network learns how to engage with you online and off based on how you interact with them. So the more you reach out, the more you share information and resources that are relevant to them, the more they're willing to reach out to you and the more willing they are to help you. Already, remember, write one more recommendation than what you're normally comfortable doing and share with me below this video who you recommended and what the experience was like for you. Alrighty, talk to you later. Bye!